So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's session. So today's is, is Tech Data's Flash System Technical Sales Enablement Session. I've got myself, Mike Potter, who's one of the Solutions Architects here at Tech Data, and also um, I've got Mark Biggs. So Hi, we've got, you. thank you, Mark. So we've got effectively two for the price of one today, which might well be a theme a little bit later on. Um, so on purpose, I've named this a, a Technical Sales Enablement Session. Because if you any any of you have recently attended any of the IBM sessions such as Fast Start or um, any of the latest strategy sessions, we are seem to be going to a more technical sales world. So we tend to find that uh, for me as, as a technical person, we tend to really concentrate us on the features and functions and the technical aspects of it. But we also need to make sure that we're engaging with our audience and making sure that we're getting that over in a, a simple and understandable fashion. And equally, if you're coming from a sales perspective, you need to make sure that we can understand the concepts and then illustrate that to a client to bring a conversation in with your technical specialist to hopefully have a successful engagement with your clients. So we do see that things are getting a little bit more, I suppose, a little bit more in depth, a little bit more technical, but that's nothing to be frightened of. I think the technology is actually, has never been more amazing. And it's, 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 it's really, really quite simple to get hold of a lot of concepts. So I, I wouldn't be worried in that aspect. So as for today's session, here is today's agenda. So we've got a pretty packed agenda for you today. Um, so I'm gonna kick off with the uh, flash system positioning, um, showing you where, it, where the, uh, the new announcements uh, of systems fit into the portfolio. And we then go into a, a, a deeper look into some of the hardware elements around, especially the 5200. Which is, which is what we can describe as the flagship system. I'll then go a little bit around the performance update, but not too much in depth, just to give you an idea of how it, how it feels against other systems and how it's aligned and, and what you could expect to see. We were then, we, what we then, we've, we've put our, I suppose, demo, which I wouldn't in some ways describe it as a demo, it's more of a taster, showing our 5200 to you. So we'll fire up the GUI, we'll go through a couple of things, show you what we think is interesting, and, and, and then maybe maybe you might have a couple of questions around that. We'll see if we can answer those. And, and to, to, to start to tail off the session, we've actually kind of stepped it up a bit in some ways. So what we've done, we've created a, what we see is an opinion piece. So as tech data, we see a lot of things uh, repetitive over and over again. So we picked out what I view in, in my humble opinion as the top five features, the stuff that we see time and time again. This is just an opinion. You might see it as uh, so, some of your clients have different requirements. Some, some of you might be doing something completely different. But this is what we see time and time again as, as the main items that I think are important to understand. And then I, I've, I've done a little bit section uh, of Mike and Mark's view. And we, we, we joked about this earlier, said but maybe we should have dubbed this as, as M&Ms. Perhaps I'll run that for a, a following session, perhaps. And it's just to give you a bit of an opinion of, of where we see some of the, the price breaks on the system and where that might be important for you to consider. And again, it's kind of an opinionated view, but it will give you an idea of what we see. I'll then show you some of the promos, which are always worth knowing because it's making sure that we're making best use of what's available to us as partners. And then of course, we'll end with a call to action. So the first half is gonna be a little bit of a blur of slides. So I <laughs> apologize for that, it's right at the beginning, but uh, we, then we'll get to the, the section um, showing the actual 5200 and then the opinionated view. Hopefully that's okay for everybody. So to start with, what I wanted to do, I wanted to show you actually our 30,000, uh, I suppose, foot point of view from IBM. So this is IBM's Red Hat hybrid cloud architecture. And this for me is, I suppose, we don't often show too much on storage uh, pitches because actually, if you look at the bottom here, the infrastructure, um, you can see IBM Cloud, uh, AWS, Azure, Google, Edge, private cloud, and power systems and storage. So IBM's strategy is actually, because of the Red Hat purchase, what was for 34 billion, um, they, they actually decided to see it as, we'll build once and run anywhere. But of course, the run anywhere is with a little asterisk in some ways. We'll run anywhere, I think, where it runs it best. And that is where the, the, the IBM portfolio really starts to come together. Because you see, a lot of vendors do not have this offering across the piece. And this is important to understand. So say if, we, well, if we're talking about our flash system storage and we go, yeah, we have a CSI driver which integrates into OpenShift and then we can actually 
uh, get persistent storage for our containers. You go, well, okay, another vendor might have that too, but do they have all of this? And, and, and the answer is quite often no. Um, so, so, and that's really, we need to understand where we're actually coming from, from a storage brand. And, and, and if you look at this slide, you can start to see a lot of the capabilities um, and the advanced services around. So for myself, I'm, I'm involved in a whole host of things across data. data. One of them being our, our retail ecosystem project that recently kicked off. And we're having lots of conversations around blockchain and um, analytics and AI because it's all about um, uh, supply chains. But also we're starting to in introduce capabilities into that around data and integration and automation. And of course, then, we'll start, then eventually we'll have a, the conversations, the foundation, which is, which is probably likely to be OpenShift. But then we will get to the, what we're gonna run it on. And that's gonna be the interesting conversation. So all these elements all will all require storage of some description. So, and we've got to figure out what, function they require to put it on the best place platform and that's important to understand so i just wanted to share that with you um so i i think it's really an important slide from an ibm perspective so let's go into what we're doing today let's roll for a, a bit of flash systems positioning so you can see here we've got our, our three new systems which is the 5200 the 5035 and the 5015 all in the enter enterprise space and then working up to the mid-range enterprise 72 and then a 9200. We also have on the far right, the hybrid cloud offering, which is Spectrum Virtualized for Project Cloud. As you can see at the bottom here of this particular slide, um, we have Spectrum Virtualized running across all these systems, which gives you a consistent, uh, consistent way to manage, it's a consistent way to um, use that data. And, and, and it makes it so much simpler. And that's why you see IBM's simple uh, descriptions, um, storage simple, um, it starts to make sense because once you've mastered and understand what protection virtualize is, you basically know what this whole product launch is and actually um, possible to do. So also on here, we've got um, a, a couple of things that I wanted to run through, which I'll, I'll probably, probably clip through towards the end of the slides. Um, there's actually quite a few digital assets that we need to make, um, I suppose, I'm sure we're aware of as, as, as sellers because we find that obviously uh, since since COVID hit, everything's all gone online. So we find that a lot of customers are viewing this also. So if you watch these particular demos that I've got here on the, the left-hand side, it actually walks you through some of the key elements of Spectrum Virtualize, which is really good. I'm not going to show you at the moment because Mark might go through a couple of them in, in his, his uh, 5200 section. But also on that second link, it shows actually a 3D model of showing what the systems look like. What you will find is that you, a lot of your clients might have already viewed this content. So it's also always good to make sure that you've seen it first and make sure you're, you're well on the ball. Go to my next slide. So here we go, here's the 5200. So this is our, our, our what I see as flagship system. Um, this is our, our new NVMe based system. And it's very much so talking, uh, targeting that entry level I suppose, entry to mid-range sort of market. And, it, and for me, it's a really um, unique use, use case from IBM to, to get to new opportunities. And there's two things to be taken away from this um, to how, how can we get into new customers? So if you're an existing partner, you can see that it's 20% lower than a flash system. So if you've got a 5,100 opportunity out there, you might want to look at uh, looking at this system. But more interesting than that is that it's the same or lower cost compared to a SaaS based array. And that's where it starts to get really quite exciting. Actually, if you've got existing customers who are just buying SaaS based array or, or um, something that they've got uh, all their on site, this is, this is a really compelling box for them to start to look at. And, and say with it being one new high, it, it, has a, it certainly has a huge impact for them. So this is kind of a more, more details around that. So if we, if we look, we can actually start to think, well, we're using less flash space. We can use a handful of drives to deliver that performance. So you can see here on the right, we have three NVMe flash core modules delivering the same performance as 24 SAS SSDs and reduced cost. To give you an idea, we, we have our, our flash 5200 sat in our Bratnell solution center. 
and we ran a bit of benchmarking test and we have an existing uh, other, let's say, other vendor array, which is a year or two older. This was double the speed of that array. And we didn't do any trickery. We just used the same host. We used the same benchmarking tool. We didn't change anything particularly different in it. But actually, the performance of it was massive. And the array that we were comparing it to had 24 drives in. Um, and our new array just completely blew it out of the water performance-wise. So, so the idea is that we can actually look to start at a small point. So we could start with three drives. Or we can start with, a, say, a, a six, and then we can go to, to D-RAID six. Um, and, and we can start small and really glow easily and start to scale up, scale out, and scale up too. Sorry, Mike, just on that slide. Also, um, with regards to the performance and less disk, we're also able to get to similar capacities with the less disk as well, just because the flash core modules have got compression built in. So we're also able to get to similar capacities with your less uh, disk install, and especially with the 5200 being one new, it means that we can maximise that space of that one new. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, uh, yeah, we'll get more onto the flash core module shortly. I mean, Mark, we've got a section here about the capacity and performance growth and um, so we we can do uh, look to do the, the free drives or we can look to to scale out too um, so there's there's different ways that we can do, to do that I mean Mark do you have any any view on this as well that, that'll, that'll probably be cool yeah so I mean um with uh, the FS5200 we've got the capability to scale up or scale out so we've got our uh, flash core modules our NVMe in the controller um, but if you've got different requirements for different workloads where we require um, SSD and standard SAS disk, we can attach those to the back of the FS5200, which means we can scale up. Um, also, with regards to that, it still means that tiering is still relevant. So again, yeah, we might not necessarily want all of our data residing on our NVMe storage um, because of our different workloads. And that's where um, easy tier will still come into play and it, it's still relevant. Um, a lot of people would say, oh yeah, let's just go all flash, but why spend all that money potentially on an all flash environment when you don't necessarily need it. So we've still got that scale up and easy tier story with the FS5200. Um, also, we've got that scale out capability as well. So we can cluster the FS5200 together. Um, and this is obviously for more of uh, an NVMe uh, performance requirement. We don't want to attach NVMe um, through an expansion unit. And it makes sense to scale out and add additional controllers and having those additional controllers clustered together for the NVMe. Um, with regards to that, with the NVMe, we want to keep that disk as close as possible to the CPU so we don't lose any performance and scale out makes more sense when you're looking at uh, NVMe workloads. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, we do have a, a, a really spoilt for options, really, of, of the way we can do it. And it depends on what your requirement is and how we can actually cut it. Um, so, so it's a really quite a compelling offer. So you can start quite small, but then if you if you need to scale up or out, we can we can do either. And that really um, gives you lots of choice for your clients. So one of the things that, that we've, we've got with this particular system is that IBM have actually simplified the, the support for it as well. So they've, they brought out IBM Storage Expert Care. So we have two versions, one basic and one advanced. Um, so we, we, we'd have, um, the, I suppose, expect to see more advanced um, selected by a lot of our clients um, because of the 24 seven, four hour response. And of course, there's still client or, or BP uh, installed systems. So again, we, we can do this quite simple for us to configure and it's quite simple for us to quote you as partners. It's really upfront and predictable uh, and, and it's done on a fixed percentage of the system. So it's really, really easy for you to figure out. Um, so rather than having loads of different options of support, we've just got the two at the moment. And, and this makes a lot of sense to me, certainly as a business partner, trying to uh, simplify that conversation with you around the quotes i think ibm quotes are actually looking better and uh, which is which is good in, in my opinion and it's, it's really quite easy to read from a, a a partner and a a end user point of view so here's a little bit of a detail about the system itself so up to 2.3 petabytes of data only in one year so and of course i've mentioned it uh, before we've run inspection virtualized across across the piece and storage insights so storage insights for those not aware of it enables you to manage um, these particular, sorry, not manage the systems, but actually view what actually is going on with these systems. And I've got a slide on that later on. 
Um, so we've got a lot of performance for this box, all within one U, which is really efficient uh, spaced. And we can see it start for edge environments as well. Again, I've got a little slide coming up on that. We've got up to 500 512 gigabytes of cache per system for growing workloads. And then, of course, we can scale out four, four ways, as previously mentioned. So the capacities here are quite massive. But also within that, we've got uh, the flash core modules and the storage class memory, so we can have the tiering to do that. So the performance of this and the capacity of it is actually quite huge, considering how small it is, um, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, and that's why we see it as, as very much so a, a market leader in, in what we're doing. So this is when I'm talking about the edge um, uh, possible requirements for this. So IBM this week have GA'd a product called um, IBM Cloud Satellite. Um, so this is all about dis cloud distribution, um, I suppose, distribution your cloud um, across uh, multiple areas. So we're actually looking to set this up as tech data at the moment. Um, I'm just getting my nodes online um, at the moment. We've actually set up our comp control plane. What it enables you to do is have those cloud services wherever you are. So we can have exactly the same IBM cloud services or AWS cloud services within our, our data center. And it enables you to do that quite quickly and be able to manage it so we can actually have OpenShift within it too. And it makes it much easier for to things to deploy. So there's a lot of scenarios for this starters come up. And, and one of the uh, offerings around this is of course is the 5200, considering it's only one year. So see if, see if you had a retail client with 5,200 stores that all required systems and storage. Well, this is actually a great solution for you. So it, it's going to be quite interesting to see how the, uh, the storage is, is a consideration for IBM Cloud Satellite moving forward. So I, I watch this space on that. Um, as a brief advert, there is actually a full launch session happening on the 9th next week. If you need a link to that, please let me know and I'll happily drop you to it. So here's, here's our, our, our flash systems family of all our, our features and functions. As you can see across the top, as mentioned, we've got Spectrum Virtualize and Storage Insights um, going across all the, all the systems. But then as you can see, as we work along the top, we've got the 5015, the, the 35, the 52, the 72, the 92. And the further we go down the chart, we end up with more function, features and functions as you'd expect. And this is solely what, what, we, what we do as partners and as, as, as I suppose um, to our end users is basically we're selecting the right engine um, for, for the storage requirements. Because essentially all, all, all the software is pretty much the same, um, but we're, we've got to make sure that we've selected the right starting point. And that's what we've got to consider. So you can see that all these systems have, have the container integration that I mentioned previously, uh, the FreeSat replication, the re local remote reception, easy tier, so they all can do the automated tiering. And then we start to move up the chain and we start to use data reduction pools. And this is solely down to the CPU power within the system, enabling us to do that. And then we have the stale out cluster seeing the hyper swap availability, which gives you 100% availability. We'll get to that shortly in a couple of slides. And of course, encryption. Um, encryption on these systems is, is so cheap, it is unbelievable. Um, it's kind of I see a lot of our customers looking straight to the 5035 because it has encryption <clears throat> and it makes it much simpler to offer your two customers. And then once we enter into the 52 range, we start to step to NVMe flash and the host connections. And then of course we get to uh, the compression and encryption with the flash core modules, which we'll go into shortly. And then of course we can virtualize the systems and keep them behind that and manage that all as one array. And of course, if we've got the real performance people at the top, we've got storage class memory, which enables us to create a tier of really performant um, um, media um, uh, to make sure that we're getting to those high ops that our clients require. So here's a little bit of a, an eye chart, appreciate that. We'll make sure that we'll keep uh, sending these out to you after the uh, session. But it gives you a little bit of an overview of how the system is actually made up so you can see when i'm talking about the cpu you can see that the entry level of 5015 this is uh very much so the the beginning of where we start it's only a two core system and we start to step up to six cores for the 35 so and that enables us to start to do more things and more you make use of that spectrum virtualized um software platform that we have and then we step up to the uh 52 and we get a much more performance increases as we go along 
uh, the capacities, um, let's say we, we see the 50 15 it starts you know, up to 392 and then stepping up to 504 and then 748. I mean, th these are kind of, I suppose, numbers. Do, do we always, we have some clients who get to them, but not, not many people do. Um, but then we can see some of the advanced features optional on the uh, entry levels, as you expect. But then once you get to 52, they start to get included. Um, and then you can see like some of the encryption, the, uh, the compression, the deduplication, the clustering abilities all start to really get there. And then of course, if you look at the right at the bottom, we've got the glory figures, I suppose, the max performance. The IOPS, we got 1.5 million on the 52. Do we expect many clients to get there? The answer is probably not. But the fact that we can get there, which is which is really, really helpful to actually we should start to model that and adjust that to that particular client's performance requirements. So if we're starting at free drives, we can make sure that we're, we're getting that right for you and getting that performance correct. So here's, here's another chart, just giving a bit of more information about the, the keys um, required. You can see the entry levels. Um, activation keys required, but then once you step into the 52, you've gone into a different class, I suppose, in some ways. You can see flash copy, remote copy, easy tier, hyper swap, all included. Um, and then you can see uh, the compression as well. Um, and say that starts to make sense because you've got that CPU and that power to do it. So a little bit on the new hardware. I'm gonna have to start to race through this pretty quickly. Um, so we can see a bit of a one page overview. Again, I can send out a lot of these details to you. You can see the CPU in there, um, two IO adapters per canister, um, hybrid drives supported um, configurations. So I'll get to this shortly when I've got a slide actually around the disc, uh, disc combinations. And then we've got uh, clustering uh, supported as well and high, high, high availability as you'd expect. But it gives you a bit of a speeds and feeds chart, I suppose. Supported adapters. This is kind of an interesting one. I kind of thought I'd throw this up. I say we kind of start to go a little bit more tech now. Um, 32 gig and 16 gig uh, fiber channel cards are our most common. We are starting to see a bit of a move towards 32. I was on a call only yesterday with um, Brocade, which are no, of course, Broadcom, and they're saying they're going to 64 gig this year. So it gives you an idea of actually, yeah, maybe we need to start to think about doing 32 gig, and that'll probably be the norm. Give you an idea actually our system in the bsc has 32 gig um hbas in there so uh that's kind of an interesting note um so make sure that actually we start to really look at these and uh and understand the different options and there's a little bit of details around sfp support we do have some clients who who run 10 gig and 25 gig um, and you used to have to do a score and rpq and um, th thankfully that has now gone away um, so you can actually connect it and we can actually uh, price the uh, optics within eConfig, which is much better for everybody. So again, a little bit of detail around the 5015. So we're starting to, to look at these particular systems now. Um, so we've got a processor boost. Uh, we've got the six core Broadwell in there. Again, it's D-RAID 1 capable um, and a, a, a RAM increase on the, on the 5015. Um, what we can do with the 1515 is to upgrade it into a 5035 with a canister swap. But realistically, I find that if we position the, the correct box in the, in the first instance, we never have to do that. Because what I tend to find is that some customers do look at the price of a 5015 and go, that's really cheap. And actually, let's see what I can afford. And to get a 5035 isn't usually that much more. And to get those functions such as encryption make a lot of sense to do that. Um, so a lot of my customers jump straight to the 5035 and only if they're very constrained on pricing, they look at the 5015. So a little bit of a model, model comparison here. You can see the, uh, a little bit about the CPU, the memory per enclosure, and of course the licensing. Uh, and you can see the HBA slots too. And you can see the real big jump up to the 52. And it's, it's worth, a, worth a note. You can see uh, the size of the cache. Uh, going into 512 uh, gig, uh, which is which is huge compared to the uh, 5035. 50, 50, and SAS expansions, this is what we're saying about scaling out. <coughs> so scaling out, we have our choices of SAS expansions. We can still do the 3.5 discs if you wish to do so. And we can have the 24 SAS enclosure off the back. 
So we can do a whole range of drives as you'd expect. Um, so uh, again, with different combinations. I do see a lot of customers looking at the 5U92G sash enclosures. Um, so these enable you to have 92 drives within 5U. And it, it, it's quite good. I see it as a lot of customers who are using this in backup scenarios. Say if we're proposing a 5035, we might have a handful of, of 92G enclosures. And uh, a lot of our customers start to really look at that. But it depends on how many you can actually fit in the rack and how many how you can actually do that practically from a customer's point of view. Drive support. They mentioned a bit around drive support. So we F, the flash core modules very much so are our secret source. So we come with four sizes uh, for at the moment. <clears throat> I think these are um, absolutely amazing for what 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 we need. So we go in the four point eight, the nine point sixes, the nineteen point twos, and the thirty eight point fours. So we we do have a, a further slide, and we'll have a bit of a discussion around flash core modules later on. And we have the storage class memories, much smaller as you'd expect. But obviously the performance is absolutely huge and that's why these come in and these are going to be your absolute top tier so use them sparingly um but be careful when you're doing it i say make sure that you've, you've got the right to mount in and you've done your modeling correctly and of course we offer the industry standard mvme 800 gig 1.92 3.84 6.68 and 15.36 and this is where it starts to get interesting which we'll have a bit of a conversation Whereas if you're looking at the 15.36 terabyte NVMe drives and you're up to practically a 5200, should you be looking at FCMs? And the answer is, I think is yes. So of course we, we do have other options around SAS drives. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, there's too many to list. Um, and, and the same drive capacities of the 5010 and the 50E that we had previously. Bit of a word on uh, RAID configurations. <coughs> All these systems are D-RAID only, um, no traditional RAID. Um, this makes sense. We're happy to go to, with you in further detail around this if you want any more, um, I suppose, uh, technical detail how this actually works, but it, it, it makes so much sense. So D-RAID 1 is what we're seeing for smaller drive configurations. Um, but once we start to step up um, over six drives, that's where uh, D-RAID 6 starts to make so much more sense. And there's a great little note at the bottom. This is an IBM slide I, I've, I've borrowed it from. That D-RAID 1 will not outperform D-RAID 6 with the ETL double drives. The drive configurations with six or more use D-RAID 6. Quite often in the Spectrum Virtualized user groups, they've had uh, sessions around D-RAID 6. What's the question? And I can understand that point of view. Um, so D-RAID 6 makes a lot of sense. And I think if we can start to propose a, a lot of systems with the six drives and above in the uh, 5200, uh, 5, that's where our maximum uh, capacity and effect will, will really kick in. Performance update. So I'm nearly at the end of my blurry slides. I'm gonna have to speed up to make sure that we've got Mark, uh, get a bit of a space for him. So this could give you a bit of an overview of <clears throat> some of the performance features at a glance. So you can see that on the slide on the right here, we've got, these are the, I suppose, hero numbers, uh, maximum IOPS, just to give you an idea how it fits within the range. So you can see the 52, excuse me, and the 5035 and the 5015 slowly stepping down. And on the far right, you can see the 5100 as well. So you can see the difference there straight away. And again, you can see a bit low down the max bandwidth too. And a little bit of detail here on the left, showing you some numbers, just to give you an idea how it fits within the product range. Again, not particularly scientific, but it's, it's well worth knowing how it fits. Um, I would expect all the partners and ourselves to make sure that we've, we've done our performance modeling within Storm. If you do need help with that, please let me know. Um, we have run Storm sessions for Tech Data partners in the past and we're happy to do so in the future. Again, a little bit of a portfolio chart. So this could step you through the whole portfolio. And again, you can see the jumps in between, which to be fair, it's no great surprise, but it starts to give you an idea of what you expect the jumps to be. So you can start to see, well, why would I propose a 72 over a 52? And why would I propose a 52 
over a 35. So it starts to get quite interesting to see how you can do that. And again, this is kind of what we're talking about with the free drives, the different um, performance that we can get from that potentially. So you can see here in this particular chart, we've got a 5200 with three flash core modules in D-RAID 1, only using one new racket space. And on the right, we've got a 5030 with 24 SAS SSD drives. So you think about that as a proposal, as a saving, what could that be? So um, I find that quite a compelling argument uh, for a lot of clients to see, well, do you have systems? Are you buying it? Are you buying systems, I suppose, in an old old way of thinking? And maybe we need to think about things a little bit differently and use what we have because the performance of the systems is, is so much better than we've ever had before. And we need to start to align to this. And this is for me really what matters. And this is where we can really make a difference to our, our end users and make sure that we're proposing the, 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 the correct solution out to them. So time to see the 5200. So, Mark, if you're out there, I will stop my share. Okay, I'll give you a little rest, Mike, for 10, 15 minutes. Just bear with me while I share my screen. So, hopefully you should be able to see my screen. Yep, I can see that. That's cool. perfect. Okay, just want to make sure of that. Um, so when you log into the 5200, um, this is the screen that we get, um, and I'm actually logged into our 5200 in the um, BSC, the Business Solution Centre in Bracknell. Um, again, if you want to get access to this or you want to uh, invite your customers to take, come and take a look, just get in touch and we can accommodate that for you. Um, so again, nice, easy on the eye, clean lines is what you want it from a, a GUI where you want to manage your storage from. So again, simplified view. Um, what are some of the things I do want to show you um, specifically around this? So I'm not going to go through every page and everything else, but I'm just going to point out some of the some of the features. So um, if, we, if we go down to the drives here, um, you can see here that we've got um, a right capacity limit on our drive. So we've got seven drives in here and we've got 20 terabytes. Um, we just got to the actions and modify these columns. We can actually take a look at the raw capacity. So the drives that we've got in here are actually 4.8 terabyte drives. Um, and the GUI is displaying that we've got a white capacity of 20 terabytes. So that's, a, a, that's around about 21 terabytes on each drive. So because we've got the flash core modules with the compression on the actual drives, um, again, we're not doing any compression in the background, utilizing any CPU or anything like that. These are completely on the uh, flash core modules. Uh, and basically it, what it is, it's giving us uh, the capable uh, limit of being able to write to those drives of 20 terabytes. So that effectively is the, is the compression in action. So looking at that, you can see that you're getting over four to one on each of those flash core modules potentially. OK, um, and that is probably what you could expect if you was if your system uh, was entirely based on structured data. So anything like databases. Um, and structured data which compress really well, um, this is actually a realistic number. Okay. Again, um, IBM will look at uh, look at each individual environment and they can offer guarantees based on uh, running um, some an analytics on your existing data. But I mean, you can get up to over four to one on each of these, um, and that's without doing anything uh, processor based, and it's on the uh, flash core modules. So that that's quite compelling um, on its own. Um, here we've got the actual um, FS5200 front view and rear view. You can see it's one U. We've got our seven drives installed here. Again, we can click on these for information. We get the information down the side. Um, I'm just going to go to um, Easy Tier reports. So I, I did say in one of the slides earlier that Easy Tier is, is still very much relevant when it comes to storage environments. Uh, again, having tiered storage, making sure that your most frequently used data is in the right tier of storage and your cold and dormant data is not occupying your uh, SSD or your NVMe or your flash core module space. Um, so historically um, with um, Storewise products, Storewise flash system products, uh, you can smack me later, Mike, about that. Flash system products, um, for the easy to reports, we used to have to do that from the, through the command line. 
Uh, but now we've got an actual GUI, um, GUI reference for that. So we can actually export uh, our, our uh, stat data and then we can upload that and see where uh, our data is sitting, whether we need more underlying cold storage, whether we need hot storage, and that can make us, uh, that can give us those recommendations for that. Um, then we've got our pools. Um, so within our pools, we go to MDisk by pool. Uh, we've only got one pool and one MDisk created in here, um, but we can expand our MDisk. So uh, this is based on our DRAID expansion. Um, if we had any free drives, uh, it would list any free drives we have here, and then we can add those in, and then we can expand um, up from those seven drives up to that, those 12 drives if we wanted to. So we've got the capability of that, that DRAID expansion uh, as well. Um, within pools as well, we've still got um, system migration. So again, uh, one, of, one of the things I still think is relevant with the uh, Flash system product is, is the fact that we can actually virtualize external storage um, or migrate storage from a, a legacy environment. Um, and again, this is one of the good features um, Normally, when you get to a point where um, an existing infrastructure hits a hard point or it's too expensive, um, the customer is going to want to buy a new storage array. And one of the challenges can be is getting that data off your existing legacy storage and onto your new storage. Um, there are other ways of doing it, such as storage remotion. But what we can do here is we can um, virtualize that storage behind the FS5200, pass through those volumes, migrate that data in the background flip over to the new volumes and literally switch off the legacy storage um, and again it's uh, very very um, limited in terms of downtime and having to install um, the flash system to do that as well um, just going to go through and show you quickly how we can create volumes within um, within the flash system so um, i'll just put a capacity in we'll do 50 terabytes test volume um, and you'll notice here that uh, we can provision it if we want to um, or we can have reserved capacity of that 50 terabytes to provision it we won't actually be able to do compression the reason being is is compression has already been done on the fcms so we don't want to compress that twice before it's written but when we're using compression again this is because um, the uh, interface is the same for all the flash system um, appliances um, we can use compression where we don't have fcms or where we do have ssds and we can utilize compression but we need to use data reduction pools in there as well uh, and then when we create it we can actually see the command that's being run on the uh the flash system so if you do want to script any of this you can utilize these commands copy them out put them in a script if you've got the laborious task of creating lots of different um volumes in a similar deployment for your customers, you can just run the scripts and it'll get deployed as you would expect um, each individual environment. Um, so that's the uh, volume I've created. We can expand and shrink that. So, so long as we don't have any data occupying that uh, particular volume, we can actually shrink that down. So we can actually shrink it by 20 terabytes and move it down to 30 terabytes. And we can do that on the fly as well. And there we go, we've got our 30 terabyte volume. And again, just a simple, we can expand it. So expanding that by 10 terabytes, bring it up to 40 terabytes. And again, very simple, very powerful. Um, and as you'd expect, you'd want it to be easy to use. And there we go up to 40 terabytes. Um, we can map our volumes to hosts. Again, relatively straightforward, I'm not going to go into that. Um, but what I will do is um, go and uh, have a look at the actual system. And again, one of the one of the challenges is updating your um, story environment and any environment that needs a firmware update, whether that's uh, to get additional new features and IBM regularly invest in their um, uh, the software levels of the flash system. Um, so we're always getting new features. Um, so for instance, D-Rate expansion is probably only about 12 months old. Um, and again, it's, it's features that are required for um, dynamic environments. Um, so we can download and we can test our firmware, um, or we can do a test and update. So that's just going to test the file and update. And again, we'll go through and I'll do these one control at a time. Um, so theoretically, you could do this in a, a an environment which is during production hours. Um, 
it will flip over the volumes to the aligned controller while it upgrades the uh, one of the other controllers. Um, uh, ideally, I would say wait until out of hours, but you certainly can do it in quieter times in production hours. Um, so that's pretty much a quick overview of the um, of the FS5200. And like I said before, if you do want to um, uh, get hold of it, have a play with it, get your customers to see it, by all means, get in touch and we can do that for you. Thank you, Mark. That was great. Back over to you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, what I would say is that today we've kind of showed a bit of a taste up. What we tend to see is that to, for us to do a really compelling demo for you, we need to understand your pain points and what you want to see. And then we can get to that aha moment with a customer. Um, but I appreciate that we've about 40 of you on the call we might have a different opinion from all each other. We might want to see different things. So let us know if you want to see anything particular, and then we can see what possible is. I mean, I, I see it as our business solution center is to explore the art of the possible and that's what we can do so if, if you want to speak to us around anything in particular please let us know and we'll see what's possible for you okay so this is where it hopefully get a little bit more interesting we've got the uh, last 15 minutes to go this is kind of the opinion piece so this is top five features in our opinion or so well, probably perhaps my opinion so i put together the slides um so what I've done it, I picked out the features that I think are the most relevant and the things that we speak to the customers most about, and we should make sure that everybody knows about it. So the first one, obvious to start with, is the um, ability to virtualize arrays. I think because we've got the 5200, which is uh, gonna hopefully be able to address a lot of new clients that have never been involved with IBM or haven't been, um, dealing with IBM for many, many years to make sure that they're aware of this. Because to be able to migrate non-destructively and it's all included, 90 days on the entry level systems, free of all good to go. Um, this is something we've got to talk about more really and make sure that people know about it. Um, and then if we want to keep systems behind that on 5200 and up uh, behind that and virtualize them permanently, we can do that too. Um, so this is for me, I say, something that we've had in the bag for quite some time back in the day from uh, Sam Volume Controller. It used to literally cost millions. It's now you can use it for 90 days free of charge, which I find just staggering. Um, it, it can migrate 500 systems of plus and above. Basically, anybody you've heard of um, who has a block array out there can be migrated. And this is great. And we need to make sure that we talk about it and our customers know about it. I know it's kind of, um, a lot of you do know about it. But we need to make sure that our customers do it, especially when we're proposing into new clients. Yeah, um, just one thing there, Mike, as well. I mean, potentially there as well, it's reducing um, PS work. So it's either reducing PS work for the end user, or if you're leveraging your PS work, it's making it a lot easier. Um, so. That, that's a big benefit and saves everybody a lot of time and money. Well, it's kind of, um, it's not just, it's not a case of reducing PS work, I think. It's a case of enabling you to do Making it the, more, the more complicated stuff that's of better value. So you can actually map out your strategy with your clients and get further up the stack to do, I suppose, what I see as the more fun stuff. Um, and, that's, and, that's, and that's where the real value is. So this is something that you know that it's good. It works. It, it's great. It it it'll, it'll, it does what it says on the tin. So uh, you know it'll get up and running. And then if you you're wanting to do <clears throat> um, something more complex, you can focus on the more complex rather than the simple. And that that's why I certainly see it as. So second item. These are in no particular order, by the way. It's not a top five or counting down to one or the opposite way around. Flash core modules. We've mentioned it a few times. Um, to get that compression ratio uh, two for one um, and above, you can see that we had 4.8. Um, we were getting, what, 20 uh, tibibytes thereabouts. Um, no performance impact and, of course, encryption with no performance impact. So to propose these makes a lot of sense. Once you've got a, a decent amount of uh, required capacity, to propose these as a technical pre-sales person is a dream. 
um, because being able to figure out your compression ratios, this makes your life so much better. I know we see other vendors starting to argue about compression ratios. They can go five to one, six to one, and they seem to make up numbers. Um, I'm not mentioning any, any names. Um, but in reality, it all comes down to actually the cost per terabyte um, rather than anything else. There's no point saying, well, I can do six to one, but actually your, your array is going to cost me double the amount. You've got to think about, well, it's not just a case of having a, 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 a theoretical tech off, which that some of the um, other um, vendors do, but we have to consider, well, well, how does that stack up commercially? Because there's no point saying, well, I can do six to one, but my, my drive's going to be much more expensive. Um, we've got to make sense of this. So to propose these makes a lot of sense. Um, and again, there's a lot of great stories around them. If you do want to have your technical fill of um, a bits around the flash core modules, there's a great YouTube um, uh, lunch and learn. I think one of the IBMers did, he might well be on the call with um, Andy Walls. And he goes into flash core modules, uh, how they actually work. And it, it's pretty amazing from a technical perspective. Um, so I'd, I'd certainly uh, make sure that we're proposing these to our clients. So next item, um, right, making HA affordable. So this is all about hyperswap, actually. I think with 5200s, we're going to see more hyperswap. It's one year, it's easier. Same space, does that matter? Maybe for some clients it will. Um, but really, it comes down to the cost that really is going to matter. Um, so that we can have a handful of drives, say if we've got a minimum amount of drives for DRAID 6, we're not going to be incurring huge costs to be able to do this. So maybe we're going to end up seeing more proposals of HyperSwap. And I think this is going to be quite interesting. So to be able to have that 100% availability guarantee is pretty amazing. And that's what I say about, well, we know that the, the virtualization works. So we can spend time doing stuff like this. And that's quite exciting. And say to a customer, I can give you 100% availability guarantee. That's pretty compelling. And I find that quite quite amazing. Considering the size of the system, uh, mid-range and above, um, yeah, definitely worth looking into customers. Storage insights. Um, it's a pain point for a lot of customers. Being able to manage and monitor, sorry, monitor all systems from a, a single pane of glass. Um, First question I always ask, um, somebody's wanting to upgrade an existing array. Somebody wants to find out some information of what's going on. Have you got storage insights installed is my first question. And then once we go, yes, we have storage insights installed, we can get a login to that. We can see what's in the system. We can actually start to understand what's actually going on. Is, is there a problem with something or has something been misconfigured or something needs to be done? Interestingly, beyond this, if you upgrade to the pro version, we can actually start to monitor arrays that aren't IBM. So that's, that's, that starts to get interesting too. And it's like, well, I, I've, had, I've had one customer, I had a conversation about Storage Insights and they were a banking client and they purchased a, 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 a 7200 and they said, well, actually we've got some other arrays that we want to monitor. Are yours on the list? And, and they were. So they actually um, looked look to buy uh, Storage Insights because of that. Um, so, and that's quite, quite compelling to actually, to help, the administrators be the hero and, and so we can actually see what's coming um, and it helps if you're looking to add another tier of storage we can do that quite quickly and we can understand where to add it and this one is more about i suppose unlocking new opportunities um for the with the flash 5200 and, and d-raid one i think we can we can start small we can we can grow we can go up or out um, and, and we can start to really have those conversations with our clients. And it's and because it's running Spectrum Virtualized, it's simple. And we know, we know how that works. And we a lot of us here on the call know how Spectrum Virtualized works. So being able to do that, combining that with the virtualization, combining that with the HA ability and the flash core modules, we have a really compelling offer to a lot of our clients. All right, Mike and Mark's view, m &Ms. So... This is a little bit of a chart I kind of uh, assembled myself uh, just to give you an idea of some of the drive options with the 52 and the 35. And I always get asked cost per terabyte by a lot of our partners and a lot of end users. And you see it on a lot of um, lovely tenders that we have to do. 
And this is where it starts to get interesting. So you can see the 4.8, what we got, £892.55. By the way, this is list price. So do not um, uh, think they're anything else. Um, just to give you an idea, you can see the, the drop that we go and the list price of cost per terabyte is going up to the 9.6s. And then it continues to drop as you would expect as we go through. And then you can see the, the prices of the uh, NVMe drives. So really, if you've got a, a, a system full of 4.8 flash core modules, if you've got 12 flash core, uh, 4.8 modules, in my opinion, should you be looking at 9.6s but less of them? It's kind of worth a thought, isn't it? It's, it's worth looking at how we can do things differently with these particular um, drives and, and, and being able to get those combinations right. Equally, if you look at the 50, 35 drive options towards the bottom, you can see their costs. So they're the industry standard flash drives um, that we're all familiar with. But once you get to, I suppose, even the 7.68 at 641 or 600, if you've got a, a system full of those, should we be proposing the flash core modules? And the answer is probably yes. But then if you think about it even further and go, well, hang on, these costs per terabytes, all I've done is obviously just divide it by the the amount of terabytes and the list price. But we've got compression on these. So actually our flash core modules look even better than that. And we'll have no performance impact and we get um, encryption on them too. So really we kind of need to think about what we're proposing to clients and filling it full of disks is not the answer anymore. We've got to think about how do we do things differently and how do we make best use of those drives? Because we know they're reliable. We know they don't fail. We know they don't wear out. So having less drives isn't so much of an issue anymore. And especially, say, if we're doing, uh, if we've got a uh, 5200, we say, half populated with six drives, and then we've done it in hyperswap um, configuration. Well, that's, that's a really different solution to having a, a 5035 or a competitor's box just stuffed full of industry standard drives, which doesn't give you actually the performance or the availability guarantee that we'd actually be able to give you. So we really kind of need to think about that. And this is kind of more of a, let's think about what we're doing and what we're proposing to customers. And I think we, we, we really need to make sure that we're thinking outside of the box and not just saying, well, I want to fill it full of drives. I know one partner said to me, well, it's only one you. I've only got 12 drive slots. Yeah, but look at the size of drives, 19.2s, 38.4s, two for one compression. How much more storage do you need? So, uh, and, it, and you say, well, we can, we can scale out, we can scale up. There's a lot of options here to consider. And that's what we need to kind of start to discover the sweet spots. Sweet spots. So 9.6s and above, for me, uh, I expect to see a lot more of. I'd love to see some stats, see if we can perhaps get some uh, uh, within a couple of months. So here's around the HBA elements. I mentioned that our, in our particular system, we've got a 32 gig adaptive port card. Um, as you can see, there is still a little bit of a difference between the 16s and the 32s, but you can see the difference is getting smaller. I know a couple of years ago it was it was much bigger, um, but it's certainly getting smaller. And by the time this is discounted into a solution, it's probably not as much as you think. So we uh, really need to consider how how we do this. And we can see the cash options as well. And we've got 182, and then we've got a big jump up to 512s. But then if you're using 512 and you've got a fully... Um, fully maxed out 5200, should you be looking at 72? Would that make more sense to do so? And that's where you've got to see, well, let's have a look at the overlaps. Are you at the top end of one product? Does that mean you should be at the entry level in another? And select your engine to make sure that you've got maximum, um, uh, I suppose, the best solution for your customer. And that could be a combination of performance, capacity, or availability. So we can do things in different ways. And of course, we've got... Um, IBM support on the, the different uh, options. I see it as you're investing in a, I suppose, a mid-range product that is going to be important. It's going to be hosting at least, what, 30 terabytes worth of data, at the very least. Um, so for me, advanced makes a lot more sense. And I expect a lot of our customers to go straight to advanced rather than to basic. Right, promos. Just a little bit quick, quick and easy promos. These are worth worth knowing. Um, there's quite a lot of them kicking around. Um, it's making best use of what we have on offer as IBM partners. 
Um, so there's Energizer, which we all know and love. Double the cash. That's the, I suppose, the, uh, the marketing slogan that keeps running and running. Uh, a better way to grow. I've got a slide on this coming up. This is well worth worth paying attention to. And also, from a technical pre-sales point of view, I quite like the idea of a test drive. Um, so uh, we're able to get a, a system on site for a customer, and then they can actually have a go of it. I, I think this is really good. And of course, you can also use our, I uh, suppose, we have systems here too, but customers might want to put data on it, which is fair enough and completely understandable. Whereas if they've got their own system, they, they won't want to try it. They'll probably really like it. It'll, it'll work really well. So, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. And then on the, the far right side, we've got the uh, race through the, I think the first 52 uh, systems sold. Um, you'll be able to get some cash for that, um, which, is, which is all good. Um, so yeah, it's all good stuff. Um, so this is the best way to grow. This is, this is actually, uh, I think uh, Martin Bruce and his, his, his guys came up with this. I think this is a really great offering. So any customers that uh, have more capacity and want to add to it, um, but maybe there's another way and a better way how to do this. Because if you're just going to add to an existing array, you're probably just going to add expansions onto, say, your, your, EM, your Dell array or your HP array or whatever. But you're going to add probably um, SAS drives. You're going to add SATA. Is that the most efficient way of doing that? So with this, what, what we're able to do is been able to um, buy a, a 52, a 72, or a 92 and virtualize the old arrays behind that. So you can see the diagram at the bottom right-hand side. It kind of explains all you need to know. So you can have your existing storage alongside your new flash system. And of course, if you're, you're looking at the new flash system, you'll get all those features and functions that I mentioned at the beginning of the call. Um, encryption, compression, and of course, we'll, we'll most likely be proposing uh, flash core modules. So we'll get that performance uplift. Um, and it's a really good way of having a conversation with a new client who's, who's not using IBM. Um, and it's all addi no additional cost um, to, to them as a, as a customer. WCash, simple um, WCash. What we tend to find in the 5015s and the 5035s is that the cash um, costs aren't that expensive. They're literally in the hundreds of pounds, so they're not that expensive. And it's really worth looking at. I mean, to be fair, I think eConfig actually adds it on by default. So always add your cash on if you can. So this is kind of a, a nice get into the end of our deck. Nice slide here. Um, just showing our success, showing that IBM are doing the good for the world, um, COVID response, um, donating up to a million dollars um, for, for, for relief around the world, which I think is all good. So if you ever see hashtag flash for good on Twitter or you see it on uh, LinkedIn, this is what it's all about, which I think is all nice and good. So call to action. We're, we're pretty much on the hour. So we're, we're pretty much uh, close to our finishing. So my call to action to you is to engage with your clients now. We've got the 5200. It's GA. It's available. We can figure it. We can price it. It's great for your new clients. We can use the digital assets that we have. We can use the promos, such as a better way to grow. We can use um, making sure that we've got uh, we've got the systems here, the BSC, if you want to use them for your particular clients. Um, we've got all those features. It's it's all there, uh, waiting for you, good to go. Um, for the for the I suppose cost customers, customers look at the fifty fifteen and thirty fives. Um, IBM touched entry level storage has never been so cheap, in my opinion, um, because we have easy tier within that enables us to do a combination of um, industry standard flash, uh, SAS, SATA. We can do the free tiers. We can maximize it for you. We can make sure that we're getting the right capacity. So say if it's like a, a backup uh, system, uh, we could do uh, a, a tier of, of, of uh, SSDs and, and then have larger drives at the back to make sure we're getting performance when you need it to do so, which is really, really amazing. Um, so utilize the IBM tools. Um, and of course you can visit it virtually. One thing I would say is if you feel like you haven't had your technical fill for today, and we've kind of rushed through it as much as we can, there's a lot to go through. The Spectrum Virtualize a user group is coming up on the 23rd to 25th of March. This is not only for IBM partners, but for end users too. Um, this is where you get to see the roadmaps. You get to see the guys who actually write the code. 
it is probably the best event for me um, around these systems that you really need to attend. If you can't uh, dedicate the time to it, I'd register as, I, as, as, as well anyway, because that means you'll get the replays and be able to have a look at the documents and be able to have a, a run through and you'll get the contacts too. Also, IBM are also running their um, lunch and learns. There's a good couple of coming up around storage. Um, so watch out for those, they're always good. So I think that's pretty much me done for today. Mark, is there anything that you'd like to say from your point of view? Or... No, nothing, nothing from me. Just to thank everybody for their time and for attending today. Cool. Right. I, th I think we haven't had, we've had a couple of questions in the chat. I think some of them have gone to us directly. So I'll, I'll answer those um, uh, throughout the next couple of hours. Um, but if anybody needs anything, please let us know. I think Georgina's just uh, put the uh, perspective on Flash of Andy Walls. I'll have a look at that later. Um, it's always, always good to watch and uh, many thanks for your time guys of course we're all here for you if you need any information or would you like anything for us um just let us know thank you for your time guys speak soon